So the use of which versus that in sentences is a grammar rule that seems to puzzle even the best of scientists. From what I can tell from the papers I read, most people approach picking which or that by flipping a coin and whichever one comes up is what they use in their sentence. But there is actually a rule for which word to use in which situation, which we are going to cover in this scientific communication grammar video. Hi, I'm Casey Butler. This is Butler Scientific Communication. If you are a science writer looking for tips to help you improve your science writing, your science communication, please subscribe to my channel for more videos like this written and made by scientists for scientists. If you're ready to learn about which and that, let's get started. So the use of which and that is essentially distinguished by how important this clause is to the meaning of your sentence. And what I mean by that is that if you can take out this part of the sentence that starts with which or that, and the meaning of your sentence is retained, then this clause is not required for the meaning of the sentence. That means instead that this clause is providing additional helpful information that can help expand somebody's understanding of the sentence, but it is not crucial to the major point of the sentence. On the other hand, if you try to remove this clause from a sentence and it changes the meaning of the sentence, then this is crucial for that sentence. It is crucial for the meaning of that sentence and this part cannot be removed. So hopefully what you figured out by now is that one of these is going to start with which and one of these is going to start with that. And so any clause here that is absolutely crucial to the meaning of the sentence, anything that if you took it out of the sentence would change its meaning needs to start with the word that. In addition, hopefully this makes it a little bit easier to remember the commas that go with this as well. If a clause is crucial to the meaning of your sentence, then you do not set that clause off with commas, so you do not use commas. Now, on the other hand, if this is something that you can remove from your sentence and it's not going to change the meaning, then this is something that you're going to start with the word which. Also here, because this is something that is just additional information, it is not crucial for the major understanding of this sentence, this is an aside or something that you even might be able to put in parentheses potentially in your sentence and not change the meaning. And because of that, we want to set this clause off from the rest of the sentence. We want to make it an aside in the sentence. And to do that, we are going to use commas. So you're going to put a comma before the word which and a comma at the end of that clause if it does not end the sentence. So don't worry, I'm going to give some examples here. So here I'm going to use blank as the placeholder for where we would put either which or that and walk you through how to decide which one to use. So let's start with the simple sentence of the cells blank or treated fluoresced. So here we have this clause that's going to start with either which or that. So it's either going to be the cells that were treated fluoresced or the cells which were treated fluoresced. So let's take this clause out. If you take that out, then your sentence is just cells fluoresced. So does that change the meaning of your sentence or not? And essentially, yes, it does, because the point of the sentence isn't that cells fluoresce. The point of the sentence is that treated cells fluoresce. So this clause is absolutely crucial to the point of the sentence. So therefore, using the rules I described above, you would use the word that and you would not need to use commas. So your sentence would look like this. Now, let's say we want to expand the sentence a little bit and say the cells that were treated fluoresced blank indicating that the dye is permeable. OK, so here for this blank, we either want to say which or that again. So to determine which we want, one we want to use, we first want to take away this clause and see if the meaning of the sentence has changed. Now, because we did just use the sentence as the example earlier, we can see that taking away this clause here doesn't change the meaning of the sentence. So this clause is providing additional helpful information that is going to enrich somebody's understanding, but it is not a crucial point of the sentence. It is an aside. So here, using the rules described above, this clause would start with which. Now to set this off as an aside, we are also going to include a comma before which. So your sentence now looks like this. And just another example here to show you about 
uh, how to end these clauses because this is another place where sometimes people struggle. Let's say that this sentence didn't end here. Let's say that our original sentence was the cells that were treated fluoresced and survived longer than untreated cells. Okay, so this is going to be the main part of the sentence and we want to insert that clause that we just talked about saying which indicated that the dye was permeable. Okay, so this clause, this aside, we're going to insert again into the middle of that sentence. But now because it's in the middle of the sentence, we do want to make sure we have the ending comma in this clause indicated here to close it off completely from the rest of the sentence. So when you do have a clause that starts with which, just make sure that you have it completely enclosed in commas in your sentence. So to sum up, if this chunk of information you're providing to the reader that starts with either which or that is crucial to the meaning of the sentence, it's going to start with that and you're not going to use commas. If this is an aside that is giving the reader additional information but does not change the meaning of the sentence if removed, this clause is an aside it's going to start with which, and it's going to be completely set off by commas at the beginning and end of this clause. So hopefully that helps you decide when to use which or that and the appropriate commas in your future science writing. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to my channel to make sure that you get more videos like this in the future geared towards making writing as a scientist easier and more efficient. Happy writing!